Navigator, Simon Michel from FIG for you. Simon, welcome to you. Uh, really settling in first on North America, just some of those catalysts for the overnight moves. What would you put them down to? Yeah, look, really interesting. We're certainly seeing a bit of cautiousness on the back of investors. Uh, they're just sort of sitting on the, the sidelines at the moment. Good demon, uh, demand for bonds. You're seeing that reflected uh, with weaker equity markets as well. Look, a lot happening in the next 24 hours, Carson. We've got, uh, obviously, the Comey testimony, testimony happening over in the US. You've got an ECB meeting. We're, we're likely to hear from Mario Draghi. Not expecting a lot of change there, but, you know, will they adjust their bond buying program? And uh, the UK election. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's a lot for investors to sort of take on, and I think you're seeing a little bit of sitting on the sidelines at the moment. Now, alongside that, reports that China might well be wanting to add to its UST holdings. Yeah. Uh, where does this come from? Yeah, look, absolutely. Second largest holder of U.S. Treasury holdings behind Japan, sorry, non-U.S. holder. Uh, they sold down a lot of their holdings last year, um, which was quite a significant change in uh, their flow over recent times. Normally, uh, they've just been increasing their holdings of uh, U.S. Treasuries. Uh, and we've seen in the first quarter of this uh, year, uh, they've been increasing again. They're up $29 billion. So what that sends to the market is, you know, it indicates that, uh, you know, the, the economy is obviously stabilising. They're not having to use so much of that money to prop up the yuan. Mm. And uh, I would also suggest, you know, some of the capital controls they've implemented to try and stop uh, external flows of uh, Chinese currency may be working as well. So mm. we've seen a significant reversal of that move we saw last year where they sold down a lot of holdings. OK, let's just put it into context on today's release, the GDP print. Now, a dollar street high, but those credit spreads uh, track via, you know, via the iTrax figure haven't really moved much at all. Look, they haven't really moved much at all. They did move up a little bit uh, last week. Uh, you know, they, they moved up from about sort of 81 up to about, where are they now, 87. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, I think, you know, if you have a look at our, our yields there, you know, our 10-year down at 2.36%, that's almost 60 basis points below the peak for this year. And interestingly, you've seen that year-on-year -year growth figure move from 2.4 at the December quarter to 1.7 uh, released today. So, you know, 70 basis points down there. So, you know, you can see that correlation uh, as those longer-term yields have drifted lower in anticipation of this low growth figure coming through. Yep. So there's a little bit of help in the form of that, inevitably, though. So be, gr be grateful for small mercies, I guess. That's true. <laughs> Indeed. Simon, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Carson. Simon Goodbye. Michel from FIG there.